So in this video, I want to talk about Meio Chiki, as this is a anime that came out back in 2011, and it is a series that I always go back to just because of the fun, sort of charismatic nature that it is. It's a comedy, cross-dressing, etchy romance in a school setting. But the funny part about it is if you do a little bit, if you try to do a bit of research on certain sites, they actually classify it as a light novel series. It's actually not a light novel series. It's actually a manga series. It has seven volumes and I have all seven volumes of the series. Now, the first season and only season of the anime, which is 13 episodes, covers halfway through the seven volumes. So there is technically enough material for a second season. But where the anime leads off is at a pretty good note. It's a series that I really enjoy for the simple nature that it, it is just silly. It's a main protagonist who is technically scared of girls due to the nature of his family where his sister and his mother use him as a punching bag basically or a test dummy for their new wrestling moves. So he's built up a bit of a me mechanism in himself where he gets a nosebleed so it indicates that you know they need to back off because they're going too far as far as being physically I honestly I would say abusive I mean what they're doing is kind of abusive in itself like he doesn't really want this to happen but they keep using him as a test dummy for their wrestling moves so he's yeah it's a form of abuse but in an anime setting, it's meant to be seen as a comedic value, which definitely leads to some crazy situations where he just ends up getting into those kind of like either wrong place, wrong time situations, or certain girls will fall on him or get too close, or a certain little princess herself, as I like to refer to her, she will try and tease him and torture him in a way to make him have his no beliefs so that she can have a little fun. And this is where... I do technically kind of see this as a harem, even though it doesn't have the harem tag, because you can kind of tell that there are a multitude of girls that do have a bit of a feeling or crush on him. So as long as it's free or more, it's classified as a harem. And I do believe that, you know, reading through the manga itself, there is free girls that do clearly have feelings for him. So the basic premise is straightforward. Main protagonist has a fear of girls, doesn't want to be touched by them because as I mentioned before, but he ends up finding out the secret to a certain butler that the butler is in fact a chick instead of a male butler. So they're, they're cross-dressing as I mentioned in the tags. And he then decides to keep the secret, but the girl that is actually the one that has the butler working for her, has agreed to assist him in overcoming his phobia of women. And that is the journey in itself. Him making female friends, trying to overcome his phobia. And you can definitely see some progress throughout the first season. But that's where it also gets a bit more spicy in that the butler is falling in love with him. And so there's this constant like tug of war, especially at the end where she's like, hey, you know, can't go any further than kissing you because you basically pass out. So they can't go any further beyond that. But you've also got to remember the little princess girl herself clearly has some feelings as well. So it's a decision that he will have to make in the future. Who does he decide to choose? Of course, I know the answer to that. And most people can guess it quite easily, but being that the entire series is built on two specific individuals getting together. But I think the anime as a whole, it's just fun. It's silly. It's not meant to be taken serious. But I do feel like some people that will watch this will not enjoy it because it's just, again, it's just silly. And it's got a lot of etchy situations in it. And that's one thing I've seen in a lot of animes, especially each anime season, people that do not like etchy and they have like almost like a repulsive action towards etchy, which I think is kind of a little bit over-exaggerated on some of those individuals, but... I'm not surprised with how the anime community can respond to certain things. But that being said, uh, it's one of those where, like, if you watch the trailer, you read the synapses, you check the tags of an anime, or you check a review, like mine, where I explain whether it has those things or not, you should be able to work out if, it, if it's something that it has, what you do or don't like in it. But I feel like a lot of people do go into animes blindly based on a bit of hype, all that kind of stuff and then go into it and get upset because it doesn't have the exact things that they desire or it has things that they do not like. So that's why I always try to make these videos where I do explain the basic premise of it, give my own thoughts and opinions and allow you to decide whether you'd like this series or not because it does have a lot of crazy situations in it. There are two fan clubs that 
are warring with each other over the relationship between the main male protagonist and the main female protagonist because people believe that they are both males that are infatuatedly in love or certain individuals <laughs> are making certain fan groups that are built around that and then writing fanfics and all that kind of stuff and that's what I, I find fun about the anime is that there are there's some really weird characters but when you look at the flip side to that some people hate those trope based characters i just find them fun i don't go into anime expecting realistic characters i go into anime looking for fun sometimes fun crazy insane characters that are just a little bit over exaggerated yeah are a stereotype because that's what i want i want something silly and fun and that's what this anime has to offer within the 13 episodes of the series but there are some animes out there that don't do that they follow much more structured more try to be realistic with certain characters and the tropes and character defects that are in them and that's fine everyone has their own personal taste and interest just for me personally i like to mix and match it a little bit have some serious animes have some not some serious animes and this is definitely one of those where i do feel like it's a not so serious anime so I, I definitely would love to see a second season of this series, but I just never see it ever happening. I would highly recommend just going to the manga and reading the last half of it. I mean, get the whole series, just read it from start to finish, because it's only seven volumes, so it's not a long series. And to be honest, I think the anime did a good job at following the source material as well, as I've read the manga, as I mentioned. And I do feel like the anime follows it really well. Like, it follows it pretty much to a T. I mean, there's always going to be little tweaks, but that's just because of how anime and manga always function. It's the same with how anime and light novels work, and then even with manga's to light novels. Blah. I just, yeah, I never see it getting a second season. It's one of those where it's clear that it's a source material seller, and I would recommend going online, finding the manga, and giving it a read if you do want to see the conclusion to the story itself, because I think it does have a very satisfying ending, in my opinion. I'm sure some people maybe wanted something a little bit more insane, but I do feel like the ending, without spoilers, is something that feels fulfilling, at least for the most part. Like, yeah, there's some cliche parts in it where you kind of expected some things to play out in certain ways, but there are some things where I do feel like it tried to like add a little bit of a spin to it as well. And I think what complements that is just some of the characters that are very silly. I will say the one most cliche thing is the mother in itself. And of course the father passes away, but the mother just never rocks up. Like, it's just him and his sister and that's it. So uh, it's one of those tropes that I do see in anime quite a lot is where if it's a harem or a romance or something like that, there's never the parents around like parents just don't exist in some animes which i just think is really funny which in this case even with the princess girl her parents are just never around but they're rich so they're probably off doing business stuff but with the main female protagonist that is the love in the main love interest they do have their father around but the mother has also passed away as well so you only see one parental individual in the story and they generally just use as like comedic value just to kind of use as a punching bag or be used as like a roadblock for certain romantic advancements i definitely will say though i really love the situations where the girl herself the i, I like to refer her as the princess because she likes to prance around the school as a princess while she has a butler but she definitely tries to fill the main protagonist with ideas of lewdness of Ooh, well, what if you got her to do this and that and fills all these fantasies in his mind i love the, that interaction between them and honestly their interactions are more fun than actually the two main love interests themselves that's just me because of how the anime is done and the manga so i'd love to ask the question off to you the individual have you read the series or read the manga what are your thoughts about the ending have you watched the anime and what are your thoughts about it and definitely give it a squeeze if it does pique your interest so again if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video